And welcome to Trip to the Mound. We are the I Baseball Channel podcast. Roy Giovanoni joined as always by Mike Lacoste. Only one day left. We are sitting here on the doorstep of the World Series, and this this day's off the last couple of days. You know, it's been weird. I didn't know what to do with my weekend. Like it was felt like something was missing because there's been so much playoff tension built to this point, and not to have any for a couple of days. It's like it's like getting withdrawals at this point. So yeah, I'm definitely ready <laughs> I'm to. Sorry, get you didn't have much to do. You should have told me. I could have had you <laughs> come over here, and there's plenty to do around here. Yeah, again, so but, no, I get I get where you're coming from, but. It's just around the corner. Yes, it is. And again, everybody's in Kansas City getting ready for the start of game one tomorrow. We've got James Shields going against Madison Bumgarner. And and again, I think in this void that we talked about, one of the interesting things that happens is that people start, you know, it's like too much time on your hands, like the stick song. You got to go in and figure out, well, can you figure out and kind of decipher which team's going to have an advantage over the other. You can look at statistics, you can look at things, but I think what we know going into it is these are two pre, two pretty evenly matched teams as far as the Giants and Royals go. Yeah, sort of. I, you know, It's one way to look at it. Uh, I like to throw the numbers out and throw that time warp deal out where you know one team sits idle and the other one doesn't. They're, that's just a, this is just a nice little uh, all-star break uh, rest you know, in between which is probably uh, very much so welcomed, I'm sure, from a number of those guys. And so that's uh, an even deal there. There's no advantage one way or the other. Uh, the, the real issue is, you know, who's, who's, it's, it's Major League Baseball, but who's playing the, really the best baseball right now? Who, who is, is, is really better uh, than the other guy? And it's difficult to, to really know unless you're sitting behind home plate, really. If you're sitting there... And you have a way of, uh, you know, getting a firsthand look at, at the uh, the stuff that's coming out of these guys' hands and so forth. And, yeah, everybody's – and then people look back and say, well, they swept them during the season. Yes, they did. But, again, you can throw that out the window because, you know, we all know the Giants hit the skids and, and fell out of the sky. So it could have been during that time. They, didn't, they, they have fallen out of the sky now and now have – you know, resurrected theirself. Yeah. Kansas City, on the other hand, is 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 still on. Uh, you know, they fell. They got bumped out of first place. They came back and they came back and they won it. And and uh, so they came back and they won it. And now they're on a this uh, seven and no loss thing. And I I can tell you right now, that's not something that you want to hang over your thing. Uh, kind of have it over your head too, because you're. You're thinking, what's the odds of us going undefeated at some point in time? You know, we're going to lose. You know, you, you don't want to get those thoughts into your mind. Uh, so there's that little thing that they have going. So let's start with Kansas City. Again, we've talked a, bit, a little bit about the momentum going in. Eight okay. straight, including the wild card. You know, like you said, it's it's at that point where they're obviously may or may. I mean, you've got to be aware to a degree that the fact that that one loss is still looming around the corner at some point. You know, it's a very hard thing to do to obviously yeah. go undefeated through the playoffs. But what are the things that you see within the team on the Royals? Well, um, I see, you know, of course, what's been just lambasted out there in, in the media, you know, all this stuff, you know, about the speed and, you know, this and that and the other thing. Okay, but here's the thing with them. The thing that you, that's, that you can't measure is – their experience and they don't have uh, anybody really on the team other than big game James you know uh, that's had any experience like that I don't believe and so that Abanez, he'd be the only other yeah, guy and yeah. but, you know he's, he's sitting over there on the pine correct, so correct. that's yeah that's enough. he's just a coach really yeah uh, those guys are going up there now in a again a uh, the atmosphere is shrinking the stage is shrinking now, where now it's just you and them. And uh, when this is over with, that's it. And so they're all trying to, you know, it's so close, and they're these guys are so hungry uh, that it is going to ca- it may cause players with not as much experience to do things that they normally wouldn't do. Now the Royals have have been just flat out playing, you know, other teams. They've, you know, when when given the opportunity. Uh, with a, uh, a a team that doesn't catch and throw that that well, they're stealing on you. So you're gonna have to be able to shut that down. Will yeah. the Giants be able to shut it down? Yeah, maybe. You'd hope so. Uh, th- so that's one thing. Uh, their defense, uh, on the other hand, has been uh, a 
a high dollar circus act where they're, you know, they're leaving their feet and they're doing stuff and they're coming up with the goods. Yes. You know, but you know, you can lose, you can, you can lose your feet or leave your feet. I should say you can leave your feet and come up empty handed, you know, on, on occasion. And so they've had that going for them where everything has been sticking in the glove for the most part. And, and, uh, and, you know, things are happening like that defensively for them. They're pitching. Yeah, it's been good, but it has not been that good. Their starting pitching has had some holes in it. Yes. Okay, their bullpen has bailed them out to this point. They've made some mistakes, though, and they've, they've covered them up. Ned Yost, in my opinion, has made some mistakes, and now he's going to have to manage at least a couple of games uh, National League style. So he could, he could make more mistakes. And so I don't know if, you know, how that's going to uh, play out either. Yeah. Now, I, yeah, I know they swept the Giants, and I'm not sure if they swept them in AT&T or in Kansas City. But, uh, like I said, you can throw that out. You know, all these stats and this 4.4% uh, of this and, you know, all that. See you later. They're trying to win a game tonight. And so you'll see managers do things that you normally wouldn't see again because it's now narrowed down to whoever can win the first four games. And so they're going to try to do whatever they can to win these games. They're that important. They might make mistakes. Ned Yost doesn't have the experience that, you know, Bruce Bochy does. He might make a mistake. You never know. Yeah. And then the other thing that I've uh, mentioned to you before is their bullpen, which seems to be this cut and dry, you know, forget it, box to wire, you break on top, you come across the finish line, <laughs> forget it. Yeah. You know I mean, if you clear, yep. it's it, it, at the dog track, you say, if you clear the first, the, the first turn and it's adios, you know, you can just walk over to the cashier's uh, window. Yep. And so that to me uh, could have some situations where it's not going to work for them because uh, again, you're going to try to, uh, have to, you're going to have, have to do some things that you normally wouldn't do. And it's going to mess, maybe mess up that, that situation where, okay, you know, you just touch a number and this reliever pops in for the seventh inning, you pop another and this other guy pops in for the eighth and you, here's the ninth. And it, that, that's what works. That may not work now, you know? Uh, and then the, my final thing, uh, on that situation is their closer. His mechanics uh, with him really doing this thing where he uh, goes towards and throws not across his body but against his body. Yeah. The Giants are going to figure something out with that. I'm gar I guarantee you people are looking at that and looking at that and looking at that. And what they're going to find out is that he, he doesn't pitch real well to a couple of sides of the plate based on who's hitting either a left-hander or a right-hander, you know, and you'll, you'll see. So if they're patient and he, you know, they, they play into that, he could become hittable. Not as hittable. I don't think the other guys are as hittable. I think he's hittable. Yeah. Just, just my opinion. Yeah. So that's my kind of little synopsis on the, um, on the Royals. I, I, uh, I guess they're, I don't know if they're favored or who's or how they're doing that, but right now I don't see how anybody could be favored or not favored. These are, it's there's so much speculation involved in the in the kinds of games that they play. Yeah, uh, you know, because even to a degree, what you're talking about are these are the things that could go wrong for them that have yet to go wrong for them so far in the playoffs. You know, yeah. they've hung their hat on defense. They've hung their hat on basically a perfectly scripted seven, eight, nine bullpen. And of course, these X factors like going to the National League Park are going to come into play to where the script is going to be altered a little. And it's really going to see mm -hmm. how not only Ned Yost adapts, but how these new players are playing within this first World Series experience. Yeah, and, and they don't have a they, their starters haven't really done. Uh, the kinds of things that you could see the Giants starters do where they go out and just flat out shut you down for, for eight innings. Their guys, a shutdown game for them is six. Yes. Right? So that strategy, uh, to me, is dangerous. Because if you're just going to keep doing that and doing that, eh, have a trouble with the, ex the amount of exposure that that pu uh, puts on you. Yeah. And so I'm not – I just have a gut feeling about them. You know, about the, the Royals – in their their 
yeah, I mean, they're uh, they could go out and just totally dominate the Giants, and and uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. They, yeah, I think um, you know, just like you know, Baumgartner's going uh, for the Giants, and uh, and uh, big game Shields is going over there. He really hasn't had that big game. A shutdown type game. Yeah. Uh, like I said, though, they've they've compensated for that. Yeah. They had some guys come up and hit home runs and in crucial situations and and stuff like that. So, like I said, they're putting it all together in their way, just like the Giants have done uh, in, on their side too. Yeah. But you know, if I were to now go and try to talk about the Giants now a little bit, you know, I, obviously I've mentioned those things. The fact that they've been there with that experience, uh, in my opinion, if they're not just too old and they just outsmarted the rest of the National League and they got by, now they're going to get beat up and overrun by a bunch of young guys. Uh, if if that's the case, then I'm overlooking them. But I see a couple guys on the Giants that are like in their prime. So their average age is 29.9. So that means, that, yeah, they got some guys that are in their prime, and I don't think they're going to be – pushovers i think they're going to be the kinds of guys that can uh, that can actually slow it down and you know focus it down so that they don't do those things that that you see happen to young players in these playoff situations where the hitters will go out of the strike zone where you can't even walk them or pitchers get in trouble trying to get be too fine too soon uh, or run into trouble uh, getting their they're breaking ball and their change up over. Now the guys start sitting on their fastball and if they fall behind and then the, you know, the, the experienced guys are, are laying in the weeds, you know, waiting for a mistake to happen. Yeah. And the good guys don't miss the mistakes. They're looking for this uh, stage. They want to be at this time of year, they want to produce, you know? And so to me, the giants have an edge in that experience factor there. Um, yeah. They don't, they don't really don't steal, you know, too much. Uh, but they can hit. They can they can hit. They haven't done a lot of hitting, but they've hit just enough, which in a way is the same kind of a game. The Royals, they've scored just enough or somebody's got just that one home run or, you know, the they or they hang their hat on the bullpen thing. The Giants bullpen has, uh, you know, come at you a number of different ways and gotten it done. You know, we've got our, our big favorite, you know, uh, Petit uh, right now who will just, come in and do you know a long <laughs> a long start to relieve you know I yeah. mean, he's able to do stuff like that you yeah and Lindsey comes sitting there he hasn't pitched at all he's you know he's going to be fresh and maybe he can come in and do some damage if they need him but yeah the the starting rotation for the Giants is not that bad you know they're they're not they're they're not going to be pushover. <laughs>